When wanting arises, when I meditate, I start meditating on the wanting by saying wanting and wanting. The wanting becomes stronger. It seems like I am only suppressing the wanting rather than getting rid of it completely. How do I overcome this? Um, I'm not I'm not quite clear on, on the logic that you're using there, but when something becomes stronger, that's not generally a sign of suppression, right? Suppression is when you make it weaker by, by pushing it down. And I would suggest that, that that's the, the root problem. Uh, because, let's put it simply, our, our negative mind states are not simple. The negativity that we have in our mind is not simply uh, a drawer full of greed, a drawer full of anger, and a drawer full of illusion. It's so insanely mixed up. And I mean, think about the, the constructs that you've created in your life, right? It's not difficult to understand how, how complex these habits could become and these negative tendencies to cling and to, um, to hate and to dislike how they can be to, to become, to be conceited, to be arrogant, all, all of the various different formations. Um, now, now as, a, as a result, you can never deal with a simple, you can never deal with a single emotion and, and say, I'm just going to focus on this one, poof, it's going to disappear. You've got, you've got more issues going on there. The... The, the, the pleasure that you're experiencing, if it's becoming stronger in meditation, then that's a clear sign that in your daily life you're suppressing it. And you're probably suppressing it with all sorts of things, probably with guilt, probably with, um, with, with anger, which, which you know, is a part and parcel of guilt, with delusion, uh, the idea that you are in control of your desires, so when I want to turn it on, it's on, when I want to turn it off, it's off. I love this person, but I won't go near that person, right? I love my wife, but these angels in heaven, when I see these nymphs in heaven, I won't become attracted to them. Um, so there's delusion, there's, there's, there's many things that are suppressing the, um, the wanting. When you're practicing meditation, what you're experiencing is actually a good thing, because you've stopped suppressing it. That's why it's getting stronger. It's not because you're meditating on it. N not directly. It's not like meditation is growing more desire, but you've got a huge lump of desire inside, like just just massive desire, and that means you have massive. Uh, well, you have the tendency or the the propensity to give rise to massive amounts of of desire. You know, continuous uh, succe succession of of mind states of desire based mind states. That's the habit that you've developed over the years. Rather than dealing with it, you've been suppressing it, and that's why you don't uh, you don't experience it. It's like you, you you get some garbage and you throw it in your closet, and then you get some more garbage and you just get this habit of throwing garbage into your closet. Well, guess what? You you end up with a closet full of garbage, and then meditation is like you open the closet and you get to have it all fall down on you, and then you're like, oh, I'll close that up again. And then you think, what's wrong with this meditation? It's it's uh, bringing out bringing out all this bad stuff. So you have a choice: you can you can keep it in the closet, and and in fact, keep throwing more in, or you can train yourself first of all to stop doing that, and you know, start to empty out the closet, deal with it when it arises. In that sense, there's nothing really wrong with the experiences that you're having, and. Another thing I would note is that it, it, it's arguable that the desire is not which is, what, that which is increasing. What is increasing is the physical manifestations of the desire in the brain, in the body. So a good example is with lust, with, with physical, desire, physical attachment to the body. 99% of it is not the desire. The, the chemical reactions, the bodily changes, the, the hormones and so on, this is all totally physical. It's not the desire. And this is why it's so important in, in regards to um, attachment to, to sexuality and, and you know, that, that sort of thing, to be able to break up the experience into its component parts. When you meditate on the desire, 
you're you're allowing your body to to give rise to these states that normally you would suppress. You would create a great tension in the body that would suppress m so many of the systems that are now giving uh, given the chance to 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 release. You know? And so the chemicals will arise, and you'll you'll have great pleasure. And then there arises the desire. But it can be that when you're meditating, uh, you know the the delusion and the guilt and so on is preventing you from seeing this. But when you're meditating the desire can actually be disappear and you can feel such great pleasure that would normally have been associated with desire but because of your saying wanting, wanting or more important saying happy, happy or pleasure, pleasure or even feeling, feeling and so on uh, is that what, what's, what's occurring is this release this bodily release and by bodily we also mean the brain so the chemical releases and so on uh, that are now given the chance because there's less tension in the body that's one, I think, one really good way of understanding this is that, uh, that you, you've been suppressing or uh, restricting the flow of, uh, of, of bodily, uh, the bodily systems. Uh, and that's what's coming out. Desire, arguably, is only a, um, a, st a static mind state. So say we have more desire, less desire. Uh, I'm not sure that such a thing exists in, in Buddhist thought. Desire is the moment where you like something. Now, if you like something continuously, uh, th then you could call it strong desire, but it's still only moment-to-moment-to-moment -to -moment -to -moment desire. Uh, and, and, and that's only a very small part. That's a very mental part of it. It's where the mind creates partiality and says that this is... Uh, positive identifies something, categorizes it as a positive experience. It sounds like at that moment you're probably having a lot of negative experiences because you have the suppression tendencies. You, oh no, more greed, and you think that's a bad thing, right? These these feelings are coming out more, and that's a bad thing. So actually, you don't like it. You're not giving rise to to so much uh, greed. You're giving rise to a lot of anger, which is even worse because now you're mixing them up and creating more complications. Uh, so it's very important, and this is I, I, in, the, in the video that, this very famous video, it's only famous because of the title, on pornography and masturbation. I said, you know, it's important to let the lust come up and to, to focus on it. Mostly it has nothing to do with the desire. It's just chemical reactions in the body. And to be able to see that, it's a profound, it can actually lead to great physical and, and mental pleasure. It can lead to great happiness. It's a release because you don't have to feel guilty anymore. You know, it's just an experience. And, uh, and, and it has nothing to do directly with desire. The desire is that little moment where you say, this is good. Right? If you're not saying that, if you're just experiencing it, this happiness, this pleasure, this chemicals, whatever, uh, then, then you, you, you become free. And when it's gone, it's gone. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't trouble you. So uh, you could read, you could watch that video on on pornography and masturbation. I think because it's also about in addiction in general. It talks about some of these things, and 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 hopefully what I've said now is is basically along the same lines and useful as well. Mm. Go ahead. I, I think you already said it in a way, in another way. Mm. But um, my first thought on this was that when the uh, wanting seems to become stronger. It can all, uh, uh, it can as well be that you just see it cl more clearly. Mm. Um, That's another that, thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so you, it, it's actually, it has been there all the mm. time, but you, you didn't, didn't see it. it. Mm. You, you covered it up, and yeah. you, you thought it is what, whatever. But now mm. you see it as wanting, as what mm. it really is. So um, that's important to know, I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, and nor because normally we we have this we, we have this self-created amnesia, right? We we don't want to think about it. So when anger comes up, no, I'm not supposed to get angry. When greed comes, no, not so. We we don't we don't keep that in mind. Oh, I was angry there, but we can get angry a million times a day and not not really remember it, right? Because we're constantly throwing it under the cut. No, I didn't get angry. No, I'm not going to get angry. But we're already angry. It's just our reaction that is um, that that is sort of switching the subject, trying to avoid the subject. 
So in meditation, we're, it's not that we're getting angry more. It's that we're letting it come up. We're thinking, okay, let's see what anger is like. And boom, it comes up. And oh, then there's the physical. And the same with lust, you know. Okay, let it come up and look at it. And this is very clear that most or many people miss about the Buddha's teaching. If you read the Satipatthana Sutta, what did the Buddha say about these things? When you have sensual desire, you know to yourself, there's sensual, or I have sensual desire. There is sensual desire in the mind. When you don't have, when it's not present, you know it's not present. This is very important. This creates the equanimity that we're talking about. Uh, it allows you to see you know, the progression of states. It allows you to see how, how greed is, uh, how, how greed works, and, and anger and so on, and how, how the mind works, you know, to be objective about it. So, yeah, very clear. It may not be that it's, it's coming more, it's just that you're, you're, you're actually not, not only more aware of it, but I would say even further, you're, you're admitting it. Mm. Because we we pretend we weren't. You know, we say, I'm not an angry person, but it's because we suppress it all. And then meditation makes us angry people again, and we get fed up about the meditation. Mm. There, there's 